Yeah, I wasn't trying to be cool just then by vaping into your face, but honestly, it was so much cheaper and easier for me to do the smoke effect like that than to try to like edit it in afterward. I just saved myself like four hours of... Welcome to episode number 18 of Not Your Grandfather's Vlog. Sorry guys, it, it has been a minute, bro. It has been a minute since I've been on my YouTube channel. Um, I apologize. Been very busy. And I know I normally say that, you know, every other fucking vlog I do, but this time it's for real. I've had a wedding every damn Saturday of every week the past month or two, and yeah, man, there's just a lot of, oh my god, I'll get into the other reasons why I've been busy. So, um, everything that I've ever put out online, going back to the MySpace days, uh, as far as my music, my own original music and all that, the bands that I've been in and all this other stuff that most people probably already know about me by now if you watch these, uh, has, has been a failure. Everything that I've put out, everything that I've done uh, as far as creatively has been a, um, I guess, a critical failure in the sense that it never really did anything. If you're a creator of content or you're a musician or whatever, you know that feeling. You know how it feels to put something out and have nobody look at it and just have it sit there and get like 10 views after like six months has passed. Um, until I started doing this podcast, um, I do a podcast formerly known as Uncovering Unsolved Mysteries, um, and now it's rebranded. Well, it's been rebranded because everything was going great, podcast was doing good, a lot of people seemed to be into it, which made me thrill. People who I didn't even know were commenting on our Facebook fan page saying how much they loved it. Basically what I've always wanted in my life, you know, I've wanted to create something and be acknowledged for it and have people enjoy it outside of my friends who are just kind of doing it to support me and... You know, it's nice, but it's ultimately you want to expand outside of the range of your friends. So this podcast was doing that, and bruh, I got sent, last Monday, I got sent a fucking certified letter from Pasadena, California. I ain't got no kids. I ain't no no child support. I haven't done anything illegal. What could this letter be? Well, it's a cease and desist letter from the lawyers of John Cosgrove and Terry Moyer, basically telling me to stop with the podcast. Um, in so many words. Really what they were saying is, to break it down, they, they patented the logo, the Unsolved Mysteries logo. You all know what the logo looks like. They patented, I guess, the name Unsolved Mysteries from what I was re reading and researching according to the trademark bureau or whatever. So they got that, they got that on lock. And the music. And other things. This letter was very ambiguous in what exactly they wanted me to stop doing. I mean, from the looks of it, they wanted me to stop doing everything. They take down the podcast, take down my videos, take down everything. So... How did I get this letter? Well, a few, few ways I can imagine. I had somebody on my podcast who used to be on the show. Uh, I interviewed him. And he said he sent the letter that I wrote him to the creators of Unsolved Mysteries because they're still tight or whatever. So that's the most likeliest how the executive producers of Unsolved Mysteries found out about my little pissant podcast. Doing good, but not, you know, Adam Carolla by any stretch of the imagination. That's probably how they found out about it. Or, maybe, we get a lot of hits in California, maybe somebody in California found out about it and alerted them. They, these big companies have teams of people who literally spend their day, their job occupation is to comb the internet for, in, for violations of their copyrights, infringements of their copyrights. And then what they do is they send out cease and desist letters to try to scare off people from pursuing it further. Well, what they fail to mention, or what they fail to realize, is that there's a little something called fair use. It's a law. It's on the books. And it protects people like me, content creators, from having to go and get express permission from the copyright holders in the cases of parody, commentary, news, or educational purposes. Well... 
Okay, for the podcast, I get it. We were using an alteration of their original logo. Fine, we removed it. We repaired. I shouldn't say we, because I did all of this. I went and I rebranded the podcast, renamed and everything like that. Um, but then there's other things that are floating about on the internet that have to do with the show that uh, I've made, and they are fair use. I'm critiquing certain things, I'm commenting on certain things, and that should totally be legal to have up. So I'm like thinking to myself, I need to get some kind of legal counsel because they can't Big companies, if they don't like some content you're putting out, they shouldn't be able to just go, oh yeah, no, we don't like that, so shut that down, and yeah, just, just, no. That, that's not America, man. That's like fucking communist Russia. That's some bullshit. So, trying to get in touch with lawyers. Oh, man, that was fun. Um, first of all, uh, copyright lawyers and entertainment lawyers and all this other kind of stuff, um, they're not really prevalent in Jacksonville, because Jacksonville isn't exactly the bastion of entertainment as you might think it would be. No, nobody would think it would be. Um, so, I talked to this one lady on the phone, and boy was she a pleasure to talk to. She was a lawyer who kind of dealt in copyright. And to talk to any of these people, they want money, first of all. Like, to even answer the phone, that that's $5. I'm joking, but not. So I'm talking to this lady, I'm just trying to see if I even need a lawyer, or just... I'm just trying to get some basic details. And I'm asking, I was like, ma'am, can I just, I just need some, some ask you some very basic questions. She's like, no, no, I'm not going to answer your questions, though, because that's legal counsel, and I'm not going to give you that information. I'm busy, and I'm doing something right now, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, sorry. I wanted to say some other stuff, but I didn't. Held my tongue. Rare for me. Um... She's like, I'm sorry if that comes off as rude, but you're wanting legal counsel. Well, it's like, dude, no, I don't want your freaking legal counsel. I just want to ask you, like, two questions. Should have just asked him anyway. Long story short, she referred me to some other guy, blah, 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 blah. What a pain in the ass it is going through this system. Now, I had to deal with the legal system on the other end. When I was 22, I got a DUI, and I had to go through the legal system in that case. But God, that was less complicated than this. It's like, yeah, I did something wrong. I have penalties I have to pay. Boom, done. With this, it's there's like all these gray areas, and it sucks. It, it's not fun, and it's not enjoyable. But I love this podcast so much that I'm not willing to let it go. So it's like, we've rebranded it. I renamed it. I went through, I deleted all the old episodes off our SoundCloud that had all the play numbers on there and everything. I've, I literally have to go into each and every episode and, and chop off the beginning and chop off the end of the podcast because they, it, I used a clip of the intro theme that I did a cover version of, which again should have been legal because covers uh, are technically legal. If you do a cover of a song, it's not a direct ripoff. But I had to cut off the intro and the ending, and then I had to I had to do a voiceover and say, "Hey, welcome to episode blah 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 of Uncovering Unexplained Mysteries." I had to do that, and I'm still not done. I have to do it for every single episode. I had to change the music, dude. It's it's all I've been doing for the past few days. I've been obsessed with it because I fucking love the podcast. I love the people who listen to it, and it's like, dude. Oh, this copyright shit is not a joke, man. These people are vultures. Like, as soon as you do something in life or in the world and it gets any kind of visibility, prepare for the vultures to come out because that's what's happening. And, you know, it would have been nice to just... Because I have their number. I have the the office number of, of the people who sent me a cease and desist letter. And they're the producers of Unsolved Mysteries. It would have been nice, because I was wanting to have them on the show anyway, just to interview them. Because I like love the show they created, it's like my favorite show of all time. And I'm trying to breathe life back into the show and, and interest and garner goodwill towards the show again, so people want it on Netflix and Hulu and all that. How am I hurting it? You know, that's my question. All, all we're doing is bringing attention to the show. So all I wanted to do was like, talk to these people and be like, look, not trying to get rich off of your show. Well, first of all, we're we have a Patreon account for the podcast that people can donate to, 
but they're donating for for us for me and Mike the host the our content how we talk about the show and our personal lives and banter and sometimes we'll talk about movies it's not like we're reading the script from the show verbatim or anything like that so the money that's being made is from our original shit it's it, yeah the we do discuss the show but it, there's so much more that goes into it than that but it would have been nice to just talk to those guys and, and explain to them look dude I'm a nobody from nowhere like what's your deal why are you pissing on not only me but there's other examples of people who have had they've tried to talk about unsolved mysteries on YouTube they use the logo and they get slapped with a DMCA or a cease and desist letter it's like guys what are you doing why are you doing it's not like this show is on right now and it's got like the top rated show and they're trying to guard it you know from people you know, talking. This is a show that's been off the air for like 20 years, and I'm talking about the Robert Stack version, not the piece of shit Dennis Farina revamp. I don't know what they think is gonna happen besides people becoming more interested in the show again, which is what they want, right? Oh well, no, you wouldn't think so. I mean, this is like the second time I've dealt with them in this way. I mean, the first time was a copyright strike on my channel where they just took my damn video down, got a strike against my channel, and now this. So this is what I've been dealing with the past week. It's been stressing me the fuck out. I've had weddings that I've had to worry about doing. Uh, my YouTube has been just suffering as all, like all hell. I haven't been able to put anything new out because I just haven't had the time, man. My priorities. I'm trying to get this other shit off my back first before I can even think of doing something like a YouTube channel, which is supposed to bring me pleasure. I don't want to do a video having to worry about all this crap. And yeah, then there's other crap going on in my personal life too that I'm trying to all squeeze together and make it work. So I've been really stressed out the past week or two pretty much. Well ever since I received this letter I've been stressed out. I feel like at this point the podcast is rebranded, renamed, new logo, new music. We should be good. I mean if they say anything at this point they're, they have a problem with free speech because I mean we're literally this has nothing to do with the show anymore. I would have liked to have talked to John Cosgrove and Terry Moyer about this problem, but they're, all they want to do is hide behind their lawyers. Because I even called their offices, I was told they were in a meeting and they would call me back. They never did, but their lawyer called me back. And he basically was like, hey, what do you want from them? Why are you calling them? It's like, dude, whoa, buddy. I'm just trying to have a civil conversation here. Like people do, human beings, like... I shouldn't need a fucking go-between lawyer to talk to these people, but <laughs> what do I know? I'm not in Hollywood. I'm just some dumb hick from Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, God. So, yeah, the rebranding has been time-consuming, and it's been stressful, but, man, I have rights, too. There's the fair use law. There's freedom of speech. You, if a company doesn't like your content, they can't just snuff you out. If it's if, if if I was uploading full episodes of the show and putting that out there, totally strike me down with thunder and lightning, I get that. That is piracy. That is wrong. But a transformative work where it's me commenting on a show and it's vaguely using the name and vaguely using an altered image and it's vaguely using a cover version that I compose the theme that's fair use that is free speech that that's my opinion anyway um, I mean that's that's really that's really what I wanted to get out that's why I've been making videos. Sorry for the 10 of you who keep up with my channel. Maybe 11 at this point, I don't know. Um, that's why I haven't been uh, putting anything out recently. Um, so we had an election, didn't we? That was a thing that happened. Uh, yeah, wow. Huh, Donald Trump is our new president. Oh, just, I can't, those words just, oh, they hurt. They, they burn through my soul. Look, man, I didn't vote for Donald Trump, and I'm not happy that he's president. And if that bothers you, you can unsubscribe from my channel right now. And I would... No, I'm not going to say that I want you to do that. Because honestly, man, if you voted for Donald Trump, you had your reasons. 
I didn't vote for Donald Trump. I had my reasons to vote against Donald Trump. I'm not going to tell you who I fucking voted for because I'm not going to start some shit. I could have voted for Gary Johnson. I could have voted for Hillary Clinton. I could have wrote in D's nuts for all you know, but I didn't vote for Donald Trump. Now we have filters that we view shit through politically and through in life and morally, you know, like I have my filter that I view things through. You have your filter that you view things through. And if you're like religious, then that's like two filters because you have your own kind of opinions about how you feel about things and you have like Jesus and God and what the Bible says. So you have like... So my point is, you're never going to see things from my point of view, ever. I could talk to you and give you like empirical data and just give you facts and statistics and hell even even the person you elected could say that yeah I did do all these horrible things and talk but you still wouldn't change your mind you would still believe the same way so I'm not gonna sit here and try to convince you of anything um, just I don't know man I, I hope he's a good president uh, I don't think he's going to be I think his lack of experience is going to be his ultimate downfall um, I think he's going to be influenced by the big dogs in Washington and the people who really run this country. Um, this isn't a Trump rally anymore where people are, where people feel like he can walk on water and he can do no wrong. He's now in Washington, D.C. where with people who actually have power and influence. And Donald Trump is just a businessman. That doesn't hold a lot of water in Washington. I mean... Sure, it's great that he's not in bed with these, you know, Washington insiders, yet, yet, he neither was Obama. You know how much shit Obama said he was going to do that he didn't do? And how much shit he said he wasn't going to do that he did end up doing? Trump's going to be the same way, man. It's going to be the same shit. I'm going to build a wall and Mexico's going to pay for it. Probably not going to happen. I'm going to... Eliminate Obamacare and let health insurance companies compete across state lines. Dude, you know how long they've been, you know how long Republican presidents have been using that as like their go to to fix the health care system? Like back in the George W. Bush election cycles. That's how long that shit's been talked about. I don't know, man. I'm not, you know, I'm not a political analyst. I'm not a political expert. I have my beliefs. You have your beliefs. I'm not happy about it at all. Um,. Am I going to stop living my life? No. I was butthurt about it for like two or three days. I'm, I'm good now. I hope he's a good president. That's all I have to say. I, I don't think he's going to be, but I hope he is. If you feel like he is and he's the answer out of all of our prayers, I hope you're right. That's all I have to say. I mean, I'm willing to give him a chance, I guess. I mean, I don't know, man. When a 70-year-old man is dating someone who is like a model who posed naked and all that kind of stuff kind of shows you what kind of a uh, person he is not the most deep person in the world kind of shallow if you dig if you look at all the other presidents wives they're not these like supermodels they're they're probably good people who have good hearts and substance to them not some lady who's like a supermodel and like Oh my god, America is the best country in the world, and we should get rid of all immigrants, even though I'm clearly a fucking immigrant. I'm joking, people. Calm down. Calm down. Anyway, that's my life. That's been my life the past few weeks. Uh, my next video is going to be me taste testing some German food, because I feel like I can't get sued for that. Hopefully the country of Germany won't come down on me and sue me, because I'm so used to getting um, DMCA's and takedown notices at this point. I just, I'm like sue sensitive now like triggered like I feel like I'm gonna you know it the hammer is gonna get slapped down at any point now so um so wo ist meine Deutschens uh wann sie etwas Deutsche essen haben bitte senden it zu mir uh bitte fragen sie mir für meine Adresse und ich uh ich würde send it zu ihnen so uh yeah send me some German food um and I'll also go and buy some from my grocery store, but they're not going to have as much as you people can send me, so have a good rest of your week. Thank you.